let's talk about process management uh, before talking about process management let's see what a process is what do i really mean by process there are two words which you which you must be you know listening for a long time one is uh, program and other is process so i'll just di- differentiate between what these two are so whenever you write any uh, c program it will look like this for example if you have written the c program example dot c right and now this one will be given this program will be given to the compiler right and what will compiler do compiler will just convert this high level language generally your c program will be in the high level language to a low level language which is machine level language which can be executed on the machine right so now see operating system task is not to take a high level language program and execute it on the machine before doing this you should convert it to the machine level language which operating system will understand and then it will directly run on the hardware right so now compiler is going to generate something like assume that a dot out so a dot out is a file which contains executable code executable code means the machine code right so either this one or this one these two are called programs only program right and now this program is going to reside in the hard disk of your memory hard disk of the computer right so hard disk means the secondary storage see uh, i say that i generally use the terms primary memory which means ram and hard disk which means secondary memory so secondary memory is generally the hard disk and everything else is uh, comes under primary memory so we are mainly using uh, we even call it as main memory main memory secondary memory main memory is ram and secondary memory is disk now this program will generally reside in the uh, secondary memory right and now not executed operating system will take that program right and then uh, put it in the main memory and then start executing it so when it puts in the main memory it will create some kind of structure some data structure so that data structure is going to look like this and that is what we call it as a process the process is something which is created by the operating system in order to execute a program so before you execute a program you are supposed to create the process right so the relationship between process and program is mm, you can take of it like this a process is something which is uh, real and a program is something which is uh, virtual right or if you want to if you want to see this a process is something which is uh, like uh, like this body and the program is the soul right so soul you cannot uh, actually it is like a virtual concept right but then body yes it exists uh, physically so a process is body and program is soul you can think of it that way okay and now uh, see this so coming whenever we want to execute the process then the operating system uh, will create something like this it will create a structure like this this structure will be created in the main memory right and your dot exe code or executable code whichever you want to execute will be here a dot out that is dot exe file which you got right and above this in your program sometimes you have some variables which are called as static variables static variables means these variables will be created once you know and then they are going to remain forever throughout the lifetime of the process right so they are called static variables static variables and global variables global variables are also kind of static variables which have to be given access to every everything in the process okay global variables i'll talk about it later in some other subject but now understand that these two variables static as well as global are supposed to be created once and they are supposed to be existing forever so they are going to be there forever right and then and then the remaining space is actually you know not divided but then you can think of it like a not strict division right something like this where you could you could imagine it this way in any program will contain uh, a need for uh, dynamic allocation dynamic allocation means like heap right so mlloc clloc all these calls the reason is we don't know what the requirement we might get therefore we will not uh, declare the uh, data structures unless they are required so therefore we have to have some space which will be used by the process later at some point of time whenever it is needed for that reason heap 
so heap will be here right and then every process is supposed to contain something called as stack so what is the what is the advantage of stack for the recursion calls right for the function calling we need stack therefore stack will be there it is also called as function stack stack will be there heap will be there static variables global variables and then the executable code now you know after creating this cp will take one by one the lines available in the executable code and then keep on executing them while executing them it might sometimes have to refer the static variables which are present in the same program that is why that will be present in the same process this entire thing is called process boundaries right so everything that is required by this process will be in this and operating system while executing this particular process should never cross the boundaries of this process which means anything that you write here should access only this part you should not write any access to the other part then you will get segmentation fault in case if you try to access some other part so this program is completely restricted in such a way that you are supposed to use only the elements present in this part you are never supposed to go outside and refer something else right so now this is uh, this part is static variables and global variables and this part is heap and this this part is stack one important thing about heap and stack is heap will grow upwards and stack will grow downwards in the sense uh, they both will not grow upwards the reason is if if i grow both of them upwards i don't know where to start each one of them and i don't know you know some in some programs stack will take more space and in some programs heap will take more space and i don't know which one is going to take how much space before executing it that is why i want to keep my options open so whichever takes more space will occupy more space in this and whichever needs the less space will actually shrink down right that is how it can be taken advantage it is like this you are having a book in which from one side you are writing the toc and other side you are writing the compiler design then you need not uh, write you know toc from half for in the initial phase and compiler from the mid phase you actually write it from the opposite sides because you don't know which one is going to take more space and which one is going to you know occupy the complete book after some time isn't it similarly we don't know which one therefore it is this is this this is the uh, kind of implementation we are using so this entire thing is called a process so this is the program <coughs> either this one or this one is the program which will generally generally reside in the hard disk and once we try to execute this then for this particular program the center thing will be created by the operating system right and now this one will be given for execution to the cpu now cpu will take each line from here and then refer to the elements here or use this rough space and then try to finish the execution so that is how it is done so this is the body and this is the soul this is the soul right and if it doesn't have any soul cpu cannot execute it it is as good as dead man isn't it if we don't have any instructions to execute even if you give that entire structure to cpu what will cpu do right nice now how can you identify process see given these many processes in the in the operating system like this we have so many people in the world right then how can you identify each one of them we are going to use something called as identification cards isn't it identification card is going to say see this is the id number maybe uh, driving id Uh, and then this is the name and then uh, this is the age and this is the status everything will be there right similarly when we have these many processes created in the memory randomly at any point of time we are supposed to keep track of which process is what and how many processes are there and what what is the current state of the process what is happening with it is it running or is it blocked or what should i do so in order to identify everything we are supposed to you know have some bookkeeping work it is like this every process will now be given a identity card right now it is a newborn baby right it need not be newborn it might have taken some time and now uh, it might have grown up already anyway whenever anything is born any process is born operating system is going to give it some uh, id card right now that id card is going to look like this uh, that will contain all these attributes one attribute is process id so process id means um, every process will be given some number right that is called process id why is it useful is we cannot obviously name uh, name a process right like how we name the people so that is why it is a unique number which will be given to a process in a computer every process will get a different number and and you know coming to this process id it is not like port number port number is universal everyone maintains the same port number but here the process id 
here the process id is actually different in the sense hmm, uh, it you know depending on the operating system some operating systems will use 16 bit some operating systems will use 32 bit like that okay and next one is program counter program counter means hmm, while you are executing a process a program uh, here the process you suddenly stopped the process and again you restarted it then from which point should you actually start the execution which means assume that we have uh, like 10 instructions i1 i2 i3 so on i10 and say you stopped the execution after i6 you executed i6 and then after this you stopped the execution and then you removed this process and then you executed some other process and later again you started this process then after this uh, instruction what is the next instruction you are supposed to execute right so that is what we wanted so for that reason we use something called as program counter program counter will contain what is the next instruction that has to be executed right so that you can keep on executing it hmm? without any repetition that is that is just to maintain that okay next one is process state so what is process state is i'll tell you there are various states next i'll tell you what what the states we have but anyway like this ready states will be like this ready to run or running or blocked or waiting anything i'll show you this later and next priority priority is it shows the importance so whenever any process is created by the operating system then it will generally assign something called as priority a process which is having higher priority is supposed to execute uh, first compared to the process which are having lower priority uh, for example if you have a operating system process then it should be given the highest priority because it is important compared to the user process right therefore depending on that we assign some number priority is nothing but a number which will be given to the process whenever it is having uh, whenever it is uh, you know created for example it is like this uh, priority given now coming to this uh, priority priority is a number it, you can compare it this way uh, politicians politicians will have uh, you know higher priority compared to normal people therefore when they are when they are going on road the road will be blocked for others similarly when a new process with higher priority enters the you know environment then that one will be given higher priority and everyone will be blocked or everyone will wait until it finishes right so like that priority will be useful and now there is something called as general purpose registers so general purpose registers means when you are executing a program some pro some program then what happens is uh, the cpu will make use of the registers right and now when you pull out that process now these registers will contain some numbers and if you pull out that process and put the next one there okay now, now we are to, so I was talking about general purpose registers. Now, general purpose registers are like this. If you have a CPU, <coughs> so if you have a CPU, now uh, it will have some registers. So, register R1, register R2, register R3, like this. Okay and now if there is a process p1 and if it is executing on this cpu cpu is you know implement executing this uh, process p1 during its execution it will be having some some numbers which are stored in registers for example here the number stored is 1 number stored is 2 number stored is 3 right and now this process some let us say the next instruction which has to be executed is uh, i4 the instruction number and let us say i4 is r1 equal to r2 plus r3 this is the instruction therefore a process will even refer to general general purpose registers during its execution it is not just that you know it is going to refer only to the elements which are present in the process it will even refer to the general purpose registers now if this is the next instruction that has to be executed assume that at this point of time p1 this pro particular process got preempted preempted means stopped for some reason it got stopped uh, what are the reasons we shall see them later and then the other process p2 p2 it got to be now p2 has to be executed some other process it came for execution 
now cpu is executing this therefore p2 will definitely change the status of this right so let us say it is changing the status from here 5 and here 6 right and after for some time this p2 left the cpu and again p1 got executed and therefore by looking at this program counter we know that the next instruction which has to be executed is i4 so i am going to take i4 and execute it but then when i execute this one r1 will be r2 plus r3 which means r1 will be 5 plus 6 which is 11 right but then actually it has to be 2 plus 3 which is 5 so whenever you preempt or whenever you stop any process and take the next process for execution you should even make sure that uh, the uh, this uh, you know uh, the general purpose resistors the state the what is what is present in the general purpose resistors they also should be stored at some point at some place so that when you again come back the entire state of the general purpose resistor should be restored right so that is why it is called as general purpose resistors which are also which have to be stored right and next one is list of open files so list of open files means during the execution of the process uh, some files are going to be opened and some files will be opened for reading some files will be opened for writing therefore you are supposed to remember what are the files which you have already opened so that later when you again you know come back for execution after preemption you should know you know uh, which one you have opened so that you will not again open it or you will at least close it right so uh, why is this one is useful is when many many process are you know uh, using files you should make sure that the same files the same file even if it is written by two process it should be consistent therefore sometimes you should know what are the process which are opening some uh, files and for a given file what are the process which are opening it and for a given process what are the files it opened it because whatever modifications you do on the file system is now going to reflect on the processes right so later what happens is if a, if a particular file is closed which is already being read by process then before closing it you will just go through all the list of process which are opening this and again you inform them that we are going to you know uh, delete this file or something like that next one is list of open devices so open devices means you can think of it like this that printers scanners and hardware devices and you know you should maintain a list of it production so production is uh, like this you are not supposed to execute get into the other process workspace similarly other process are not supposed to get into your workspace right so operating system should protect you from others as well as it should stop you from accessing the other data so everything every information will be maintained in this right it is a kind of identification card like how our identification cards work here also the same way it will work now where will all this information be present is it will create something called as for every process it will create something called as process control block in this process control block the entire information will be present so for every process we get one process control block let us say this is the process control block for p1 and this is the process control block for p2 process control block for p3 right so so on for all the process we have process control blocks and all these process control blocks will be will be present in a linked list right so you can know by looking at this list of process control blocks how many process are executing i mean how many process are there in the system and then uh, which one is doing what by looking at the state of it and then you can know what are the files used by each one and many things various things everything you could you could get it get it from this information understood this so this is the list of PCBs which is going to indicate how many everything about the process. A particular process can be identified using one PCB but the all the processes if you want to know about them information then you can look at this list right. Everything is maintained by the operating system in a linked list. Okay.